and we're back. Welcome to another episode of Successful Marketing, Sales, and Relationships for Adult Business Owners and Entrepreneurs. I am your host, best-selling author Sadan Long, and it's Monday, and we are fastly approaching August 1st. Matter of fact, August 1st is coming later on in the week. So today, what we're talking about is what we've been talking about is how to improve that call to action. Okay, and if you're saying, well, why would I listen to you? Well, I'm um, best-selling author, work hit number one, business mentor and coach, um, books with some of the um, America's most influential people. Work has generated upwards of eight figures at this point, and you know, based on those things, people would say I'm one of the best in my industry. So, with that being said. That's why you should listen to me. Plus, I can help you, and it's a podcast, and it's free. So, even if you try and it doesn't work as well as a million dollars, if it gets you a few more dollars for next month while lowering your bills and making it a little bit easier on you, why wouldn't you try it? But without further ado, let's get right to it. A quick recap of last week. Last week, we were talking about um, call to actions and why they weren't working. You know, we talked about not making a claim, you know, so you are a coach, okay, that does what? You know, so we had no real reason for people to buy, so people didn't buy, and I said that there was going to be a part two, and here's the part two, and the part two we're talking about trust, Now I mentioned briefly that, you know, my work is generated, you know, somewhere in the eight figures and counting right now, help generate actually. You know, with the partnerships with really good, hard-working business owners. My brains, their brawn, has gotten us to some really good places. But the thing that's really made the biggest leap for clients when I work with them, helps clients make the biggest leap, is when people start trusting them. Okay, so when people start to trust you, that's when your money will go up. That's when your call to action will go up. That's where you'll really start to see return on your investment. Why? Because without trust, there is no transaction. No trust, no transaction. Think about it like this. When's the last time you gave your personal information to somebody you didn't trust? You know, even if you're out and the guy says, let me get your phone number, let me get your Instagram, let me get some contact information. If you think that person's going to stalk you, spam you, steal your identity, you're not going to give them your personal information. Right or wrong. The same thing happens in business. Why would a person give you a meeting? Why would a person give you a credit card? Why would a person give you access to their personal information, websites, and all the above if they can't trust you? And in order for you to do business, you need people to give you their contact information. In order for you to do business, you need people to give you credit card information. You need people to give you addresses. You need people to give you access to things that, if they're afraid to give them to you, will stop you from being able to make a living in your chosen field. The reason people who work nine to fives have it easy in regard to getting a sale or easier most times it's because people don't have to trust them, they just have to trust the company. But in entrepreneurship, in small business owner world, you're the person they have to trust. They have to trust your company, you have to trust that if they give you this credit card, that you're not gonna skim it or scam it and reuse it. They have to trust that you're not gonna take their information and resell it. So trust is the key. And if you're struggling with trust, you probably don't even know it because most people don't say, hey, I don't trust you. Most people say, we'll get back with you. Um, I need to go back and talk to my superiors. I need to go back and talk to my wife. I need to go talk to somebody. And that's just to get out of the room. That's just to kick it down the can, kick the can down the road a little bit because they don't trust you. Okay. If they trusted you, they'd be signing the contract. They'd be handing over their credit card. They'd be doing whatever it is that they needed to do to get you to do the thing you said you could do for them. 
So somewhere in there, there's some mistrust. But here are three things, because I promised you three things. I'm going to give you three things that makes it a whole lot easier to build trust, get transactions, and make your call to action work. Because like I said, the call to action doesn't work if people don't trust you. Because you can say, click the link, and they go, eh, nah, I'm good. You can say, give me a call. And they'll say, uh -huh, I'm, I'm good. You know, you can have a meeting with them, get a presentation and all that stuff, and they'll still get up and say, well, we'll get back to you in a week or two, which means that they're not getting back with you in most cases. And you can call them, you can spam them, you can email them, you can keep circling back to them. But if there's any doubt in their mind as to whether or not you're trustworthy, and that's very easy to do, create doubt, that is. Because your competition is negatively campaigning against you. They're saying, don't use people like you. Don't use you. So you're going to have to overcome that. And depending on the industry you work in, there's probably a lot of scammers. Like if you're somebody who goes door to door, door to door, people aren't going to let you in. They're going to look at you on the ring camera. So you could be a very good handyman. You could be great at landscaping and lawn care. But knocking on doors might not work because people are afraid of home invasion. Have nothing to do with you. You could be very good at baking. But people might be afraid to give you their credit card depending on what type of cash register system you're using. You know, some people don't want to give you their card to scan on your phone. So, now let's get to it. Because I said we're going to keep them short and we're at this six and a half minute mark. So, I got to get to what I said I was going to get to. So, you can get to your day. Number one, the thing that helps you call to action work is consistency. Okay. The one thing that makes people trust you is consistency. The reality is, is people need to know you're not going anywhere. People need to know if something happens, they can call you up. They can come by your store. They can go to your office. Okay. So you have to keep consistently showing up. Now, I run in my neighborhood. Got to run after this, by the way. But I run in my neighborhood. Been running in my neighborhood for about eh, four and a half, almost five years. There are people in my neighborhood who have gotten so used to seeing me that they think they know me. And I'm not saying that they don't, but to the point where they've invited me out to dinner, they've invited me out on their boats, they've invited me over for holiday um, festivities, all because they see me in the neighborhood. I speak to them, they speak to me. We occasionally have a little bit of a chit-chat, and we build some rapport. And eventually it becomes, hey, man, you should stop by. Man, next time you're out, come on by. Why? Because they see me on a regular basis. How harmless could a person that I see all the time really be? You know, same thing when you watch your favorite shows. Okay. A show that has been running for years, you have built up a relationship with. You know, I always use like guys like Steve Harvey. People have been watching Steve Harvey for 30 years. So if Steve says, hey man, I'm having um, a sale on concert tickets come on out if Steve says go to a particular website buy a certain type of herb because you built this relationship with Steve to the point where you know Steve's not going anywhere you trust him so because you trust him now you're voting for him with your dollar if he was doing so if he wasn't doing good work he wouldn't be on right especially not for years But see, this is what happen, happens, per se. When people trust you and they've been seeing you, now it becomes a, f a situation of familiarity. So because of the familiarity and because they know they can come back to you if something happens, they're a lot more likely to take a risk, which is what you need them to do. Because that's what trust is really about. Do I have enough confidence in you that you're not going to scam me to risk the possibility of being scammed? Okay. 
Number two, when it comes to building more trust and making your call to action work better, it's transparency. Okay. Transparency, honesty, contrition, all words that are similar. But what they're really saying is, can I trust that what you're saying is the truth? Okay. And the best way to get people to believe that what you're saying is the truth is to tell them the bad parts. You know, when I talk to clients, I say, hey, man, this is this is not a magic bullet. This is going to require work on both of our parts. Yes, my work has generated money into the eight figures at this point. But here's the reality. It only works for people who work. People who limit themselves by being lazy. People who limit themselves by not taking the advice. People who limit themselves by not doing everything they possibly can to take the tools, skills, strategies, processes, and practices, practice, practices, practices that I've given them and applying them and sitting down with me and looking at the success we're having and figuring out where we can improve and figuring out what other areas we could take advantage of and then actually taking advantage of them don't do as well. Now, are there people that I can help even if they don't want to help themselves? Absolutely. But imagine what you could do if you were as invested and you weren't canceling the meetings and you weren't running off and doing other stuff instead of being focused on growing your business so that you could then hire people who are even better than you at running a business so that now you become a business owner and not a business operator. Imagine what you could do if you had more cash on hand. Imagine. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you what you could do. If you have cash, people will want to give you credit. Why? Because they see that you can pay back the money. Why? Because they can get a return on their investment in you through something called interest. So if you've proven you can pay back money, proven you can make money, then you are someone who they want to give bigger lines to credit to. Why? Because you have money. A person with no money cannot prove that they can pay back a loan. Because the thing that gets most people caught up is that when they start evaluating you as a personal guarantor of whether or not this money is going to be paid back, there are not enough things working in your favor to make this a good opportunity for them. But again, somebody has to tell the truth to you at home because you're thinking, oh, wow, I'm just going to go get a line of credit. But if you have no track record of paying people back, if you have no track record or means to show that this business plan is an actual business that is working and generating revenue, the guy who has to sign off on that thing, you know, that guy that if it doesn't go well, is probably going to lose his job, probably isn't going to do it. Now, I'm getting off topic, but I'm staying as close to the topic as I can because I need you to understand. If you can get your sales up, lines of credit, opportunities for grant money, all those things come into play because now your profile goes up. I have clients who've won Emmys. I have clients who've won Business Woman of the Year. I have clients who had one of the top tens in the small business blogs on LinkedIn. And all of those people, other people want to do deals with. All of those people, other people want to have on their platform. All those people, other people started wanting to make it easier on them. Why? Because they wanted to work with them. Because their platforms grew. Because their influence grew. Because their connections grew. And I want to be connected to the person that wins. So all of this can happen if you get that, you know, that call to action piece right. Had a client one time. You know, she has a PhD. She's a college president. And she asked me how successful I thought she was going to be in this space. And my response was, you will be as successful as you are honest. Because if you tell people the truth, the immediate assumption is that you're not lying. You know, I tell people all the time. I had a best-selling book. Then I went broke. How'd you go broke? Because I had a 
whole bunch of money going out in marketing, a whole bunch of money going out in promotion, a whole bunch of money going out, period. Websites, t-shirts, flyers, radio time, all that money going out. Not enough money coming in. Selling books. The books sell for about 20, 25 bucks a pop. You know how hard it is to sell enough books to pay your bills? I do. So I realized that the book is just really the beginning. And now you have to do something with that information that actually helps move people to the next level. And I could move more people to the next level having coaching calls with them than I could giving them a book, hoping that they have the time to read it. So, yes, you can buy the book, but you got to sell a bunch of them. And if you don't sell a bunch of them, you're probably going to go broke because books cost money to put together. Books cost money to get printed. Books cost money to get shipped to other places. So, again, being honest, if you say, hey, man, I've struggled with these things. I've overcome these things. I know what it's like to go through these things. People assume you're telling the truth. Why would I get out here and say I know what it's like to be fired if I hadn't been fired? Actually happened twice. Been downsized, company closed before. When I came to social media, all I had was a cracked Android, some internet, Facebook, and priceless information. So I know what it's like to literally start at zero and go from zero to actually having a business that pays my bills and allows me to travel the country and allows me to go run in the morning and not have to go punch a clock. And I know the path to creating wealth for my clients. My challenge is how many of these marketing people have you ever talked to that can actually call somebody up and say they made them some money? How many of these people that are coaches and Life coaches can actually call the client up and say, hey, tell them how I helped you get businesswoman of the year. Tell them how I helped you win an Emmy. Tell them how I helped you, helped you do whatever. How many of them can actually do that? I know those things. But the only reason I know those things is because I failed. And when I failed, all I really had was either the embarrassment of having to go try to find a job, the embarrassment of not having money and not being able to meet the obligations to the people I am obligated to, you know, not just bills, but actual family and friends and people that you're involved with on a social level or date or things of that nature. Because now you don't get to go on the vacations. Now you can't take the dates. Now you can't do whatever. Now you got to ride around with that donut on your car. You know, got to ride around with no insurance and tags or whatever. Whatever risk you're taking, you don't have any health insurance or you're walking around with an ailment. I know all those things. Because when you don't have money, that's what ends up happening to you. And I know the path out of it. So, again, if you're somebody who's in those situations, just go to GrownUpRich.com. Seriously. I know how to do it. Proven track record. Ask about me. Matter of fact, if you can find somebody better than me who's in the same price range as me, I'll look at whatever it is they're offering, tell you if it's good or bad, real or right, and wish you nothing but the best. I don't think you can. I say that with confidence. Now, got only a few more minutes, so let's get to it and get right back to it because I got to close this up because I promised they would be shorter. And here's the last thing. So we've gone over consistency and we've gone over transparency. The last thing is clarity. People who get confused about what you do will never give you any money. People who are confused about what they're going to get for their money will never give you money. So if what you're saying is confusing to them, It might sound cute, but if it's confusing, it won't make any cash. If it don't make sense, it won't make money. That, I guarantee you beyond a shadow of a doubt. 
if you walk into a place and you're not quite sure what it is that they're asking of you, you're going to leave. Give you an example, real quick, simple. So I was considerably heavier than I am right now, and I went to get my blood work done for my job. But in order to get my blood work done, you know, you got to fast. So now I'm on my little 14-hour fast. I'm sitting there. I'm like, cool, let me get this blood work done so I can eat. I'm seeing people come past me with these styrofoam cups and these bags. So I assume, hey, man, must be a hot dog or Italian beef or sub, sub shop or something a couple doors over because I keep seeing these people walk by. So fat, greedy, mind me, thinking, cool, after I get this done, I'm going over there and grab me, a, you know, Polish or something, get me a Pepsi, so on and so forth. So I get my blood work done, I come out, walk into the place, and it's a Nutra-like place. It's a place where they sell protein shakes, smoothies, you know, shout out to higher level. And walk up to the counter, never forget so I asked the girls about the, asked the girl about the place. She's like, um, we help people with weight loss. You know, here's how it works. You do a shot of aloe vera, you get a tea, and then you get a smoothie. You do that twice a day, and then you have a small meal at night. You'll lose weight. That simple. So what do you want? Forty-five seconds. That simple. What do you want? We help people lose weight. Here's how it works. So now, what do you want? I'm standing there with this dumbfounded look on my face, and she's like, look at you. You obviously need to be here. I told you what we do, so now let's get to it. What do you know? Let's give it a try. 70 pounds later, it worked. Referred other people because they saw the results I was getting, so then they were pulling up. All because the girl explained it to me very simply, very clearly, and it worked. So again, if there's some clarity on what it is, people can then trust that because now it's not confusion. It's not, I'm a coach. It's not, you know, I do hair. You know, I do this kind of hair for these people. I make these kinds of things for these people. If you ask me what I do, I make people money. That is the bottom line. You can call it marketing. You can call me a business coach. You can do whatever little fancy thing you want to do to wrap around it. End of the day, I am about helping you get the most revenue possible going into your business, keeping that revenue going. So that you could then hire really great people so that now you got a business that doesn't require you to show up at it every day. So that you can then open other businesses. So that you can then put more money in your cash reserves. So that you can then go on vacations, buy houses, and get other things that you wouldn't otherwise get if you didn't have that money coming in. And I really enjoy doing it for grown folks. Why? Because getting old is expensive. The older you get, more medications cost. The older you get, less overtime you can work. The older you get, the more money matters. You know, when you're young, your lifestyle's trap, your lifestyle is crap, and you okay with it. You get a little bit older, you can't eat dollar menu stuff anymore. You get a little bit older, you ain't gonna drink them cheap pops and you know, cheap sweets. You're not gonna eat any of that stuff. So you need quality food. Why? Because your health is more important. You need quality beds. <laughs> Let's just keep it a buck, right? If you're 40 plus, you need a good bed. Good beds cost money. If you're 40 plus, you got kids, tuition costs money. Private schools cost money. Weddings cost money. Open houses cost money. Everything costs money. So if you're a business owner, you're still responsible for that stuff, just like somebody who has a job. And if what you are currently using is not working, why are you still using it? 
there's a better way, there's a better person, there's a better outcome, and it is created by me. Go to grownerrich.com. This is exactly what's going to happen. They're going to send me an email. I'm going to send you an email back. We're going to figure out a time that we can talk about, number one, what your current revenue is. And it doesn't matter to me if it's only $400. But whatever your current revenue is, we will talk about it. Then we will talk about where you want to be. Then we will talk about what is working for you, what could work for you, and what isn't working for you. At the end of that, my next question to you is going to be, how important is it to you, and what are you willing to do about it? Because if it ain't important to you, it can't, it ain't going to be important to me. If you like doing $400 a week, I have nothing to say about it. But if you're doing 400 and you wish you were doing 2000 and it's important enough to you to take the things that we talked about and implement them and then actually set up other times, other meetings to hold yourself accountable to what we agreed to so that you can then see the results, then that's what I want to see. Because I'm willing to take the time out. It ain't going to be free. No, it's not. But I will show you how to make money. I will show you how to get much better at keeping customers. I'll show you how to double and triple your profits. I'll show you how to hire great people. Because I've done all those things. Everything about me improved when the people around me improved. When I started working with guys who could teach me how to sell not just the current thing, but the thing down the line as well. My business got better because now I was able to keep customers and not just have these one-offs. When I really learned about referrals, I was able to get customers who, guess what, I'd never met before, <laughs> who were sold by people I'd already worked with or sold because they saw the results that I'd gotten for other people. But that was because of the people I was able to get information from. The people who were able to then pick up a phone and say, did you do the thing you said you were going to do? Okay, How did it go? Let's look at it. Okay. Here's where you made your mistake. Here's where you could probably do a little bit better. That's when my business started taking a leap. Because I became committed to making it take a leap. When I had somebody actually willing to sit down with me, and I was willing to let them tell me things that were uncomfortable that I did not want to hear, but made me a better business owner. That's when it took the leap. And I'm willing to do the same thing for you. Again, we can call it coaching, we can call it whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is, we're going to talk about what is important to you. What's working, what's not working, what could work better. Once we figure out what could work better, you got to be willing to do your part. And if you're willing and committed to doing your part, and parting with some of your money, the opportunities are limitless. I got a proven track record of doing it. You can ask about me. If you want to ask other people about me, they'll tell you. And I'm comfortable with whatever they tell you because I don't owe anybody a dime. And everybody I've worked with has not only made money in the present, made money in the past, and continue to make money off the ideas, information, processes, strategies, and practices that I teach them to do that simple and if you're in a position where you need me to really step in and start doing the stuff for you we can discuss that as well but as always man it's your business big bro Sedan Long aka the most dangerous man in marketing aka Mr. Better than your 401k with another episode of successful that's right successful marketing sales and relationships for adults that's right folks grown folks Small business and entrepreneurs. Have a great Monday. I love you. It has been a pleasure. Consuela, thank you for tuning in and make sure that you leave your link in the comments. Because again, door decor is a beautiful, wonderful thing, perfect way to honor your whole family. <laughs> you know, we got people turning 75. My mama just had a birthday the other day. Put something on that door, put something in that house, 
to show that you really care and acknowledge the contribution these people have made to your life, especially those of you who have loved ones who've gone on to be with the Lord. Nothing like a nice little shrine, little memory of grandma to make everybody feel good. So, as always, man, I love you. It's been an honor. I'm out.